There has been an evolution of the Threvolution. This is a Ambipure. Well, it's Procter & Gamble, I think, make this. It's Procter. Yes, it is Procter & Gamble. It's an air freshener. Well, they say an air freshener. It aromatizes the air. And it takes these little bottles, and they're quite stylish, I have to say. You basically unscrew the caps of each one, making sure you don't get it in your finger because it's incredibly unpleasant. And it has what they call complementary smells. Very hard to tell the difference. And in the case of this new unit, you slot it in like that, and it alternates roughly 45 minutes per aroma. But when you plug it in, let me just plug this in right now. You'll see the LEDs there going through a little sequence and then it stops on one. Now this claims to have smart programming. The smart programming, as far as I can see, simply relates to the fact that it has a facility to detect that the cartridge is missing. It's got a little switch in here. And it might be able to detect when it has been changed, but does it have memory backup inside or something like that? Certainly if you plug this in with nothing plugged in, it just carries on as normal. It presumably heats the chamber. So I thought, maybe there's uh, some memory system that, uh, if you unplug it, it holds a charge for a while. So when you unplug a cartridge and plug it in, it uh, knows that there's a new cartridge and uh, it just stores it, the memory for long enough to, to, or charge long enough to detect that. But it also says this thing lasts for 90 days if you only use it for 12 hours a day at the low setting, This these uh, aromas. And that means it would be off for quite some time. So how is it actually storing that memory? I'll tell you what, before I go any further, I'm going to get these lids back on because the place is absolutely stinking of, sort of spiced apple type aroma type stuff. There we go. I have contained the spiced apple aroma. I mean, it's not bad. It's vanilla-ish. It's odd. But the only way to find out is to pop the lid off these. So I shall open this new smart programming one and we shall explore what's inside. I have a drill. It's heat stick together, by the way. You can't just unscrew it. Oh, I think that I may have overdrilled that one. And that one. I'm being very, very reckless, as if I just don't care. It's also making crunching noises. I think it may be ambipure sad programming now. Oh, what do we have? What do we have? Here's the switch that toggles that. Here is a little plate inside. Where's something to lever and hack at that with? Is this going to come off? What holds this on? Oh, I think it's coming off. Oh, that's uh, held on by these rivets that I completely failed to drill out properly. Oh, that's going to be louder. Right, what do we have? We do have a little switch here. Right, let's investigate this. Right, tell you what, it's photo time. One moment, please. Well, this was interesting to reverse engineer. It does have a memory courtesy of this little capacitor here, so it knows if you've taken that unit out the wall, even for a prolonged period of time, and then removed the cartridge, it's very clever to reset the timer when it's powered up again. So this side of the circuit board, I flipped the image over so it correlates to the, what, the other side. It has the power th level setting, of which it's got three positions, but only two actually signal to the processor. If it uh, detects that neither positions are selected, it goes to the high setting. It has a 40 milliamp quick blow fuse. It has a couple of current limiting resistors for the low voltage supply, which is around about five volts. It has the half wave rectification diode. And I, I was expecting thyristors, but it's actually got transistors here. It's interesting to note that it pulses. If you select the lower power setting, the full setting just has them on all the time, uh, but sequence, sequences through them 45 minutes roughly each. But if you set a lower setting, it pulses modulates at only about 8 hertz, so it's just pulsing them continually at low speed. It's quite interesting. And we have the LEDs up here and we have the switch. The switch that when the cartridge is inserted is normally open, but when it's uh, out like this, it actually shorts. So that switch is shorted right now. The other side of the circuit board shows a second uh, diode. So that's the ingoing diode, then a second diode in series just a belt and braces approach, I'm guessing. And then that feeds this sort of what you might call the high voltage bus for the heaters, but then also goes through those resistors over to a Zener diode based uh, power supply over here to feed the chip. 
All that's really in the back of here is uh, the transistors and a couple of resistors per transistor, one resistor per LED, which are independent, and then the clever bit of circuitry down here. So if you want to take a quick snapshot of this, uh, it's not going to be easy to reverse engineer in the sense that the tracks are quite hard to follow because they're quite thin. But let's bring in the schematic of the unit. And it's clever. I like this. Is this a bit too glarish? No, it's not too bad. Incoming supply. Via the two diodes, uh, feeds that common uh, unsmoothed bus for the heaters. The other connection goes via the 40 milliamp fuse. And it's actually affected the common zero volt rail for the circuit ref for the circuit reference throughout the whole thing. Each heater has a transistor with a 47k pull down resistor on its base and a 10k resistor to the microcontroller to actually turn that transistor on. What are those transistors? Let me just remind myself what they are. MPS A44. MPS A44. 400 volt transistors with a gain of about 50 to 200. After the three heater blocks, you've got the two 15k dropper resistors, which will uh, limit the current, and then it's capped to about, say, 5 volts, but 4.9 volts is what I measured across this Zener diode. There's a little decoupling capacitor, and there's a 100 megafarad smoothing capacitor to provide us a fairly stable supply for the rest of the circuitry. The microcontroller controls the heaters, but it also controls these LEDs independently. That means it can have the LED just lit saying this aroma is active, but in reality behind the scenes it's pulsing the heater for that one on and off to regulate its power. And they've got a 4K7 resistor in series at each, just to keep the current down, just so it's not glaringly bright, and also just to because it's a very simple power supply. The aroma level setting is two pull-up resistors, 47K, and a switch that goes to the ground. I've just drawn the ground block there and the ground block here, the zero volts, and it can switch either between low or medium, or in the middle when it's not connected to either, it's high. So if either of these goes low, it will select the appropriate level, but if they're both floating, it goes to the high level. Now we come to the very clever bit. The microcontroller can turn on this transistor here. I didn't write the value of those resistors in. I should have. They're 10k. So it can turn this transistor on, and when it does, it connects the top of this capacitor, 100 microfarad, 10 volt, to the positive rail via a diode and a current limiting resistor. The resistor is there just because simple power supply, just it doesn't need to charge capacitor very quickly. So that just takes any sort of peaks and spikes of just connecting it directly away. So this capacitor is charged up, but when this transistor is turned off or when the unit is unplugged, uh, the capacitor can't easily discharge. And the capacitor is connected to the gate of this MOSFET. And because MOSFETs are voltage driven, they're not, they don't pass much, if any, current. I mean, it will be microamps, nanoamps, picoamps. It's very low leakage. Because of that, and because the only places that current can uh, discharge this capacitor are its passive discharge current via that uh, diode, but also it would have to be via the transistor that's turned off and via the gate of the uh, FET. In reality, this capacitor will stay charged for a very long time. Literally, you could go back to it days later. So that does allow you to, un that allows them to do their, you can unplug it for half the time each night or turn it off at the wall for, for half the day. But it will still retain that memory. The point at which it won't retain the memory is that if you take that cartridge out, if you pull the aroma bottles out, that switch will release. And when it releases, it will bridge a 100 ohm resistor across that capacitor and it will discharge it. So that when you plug the unit in, the microcontroller first will test a oh, very weak pull up in this uh, MOSFET. And if it detects the MOSFET is on, effectively pulling down, it knows that there's still a charge of that capacitor and it knows it's uh, still got the same cartridge. It, nobody's actually pulled the cartridge out of it yet. After it's done that, just to make sure that's topped up, it will then, after it's done that test, it will then turn on this transistor for as long as is needed, all the time probably, just to keep that topped up. The reason it's even able to do that in the first place is because it has to test before topping that capacitor up. It has to test it first when you first plug it in. And so that's basically how it's got that memory. 
it's very simple, very neat. Simply the very low losses of this capacitor and that's how it stores the memory. I'm not sure how long it would store that for. It does mean that if you left it unplugged for a very, very long time, technically speaking, it would gradually reduce to the point that it would say that it would think it's got a new cartridge. But in reality, it wouldn't really matter because uh, people would detect when the smell had reduced and they'd check and see if the cartridges were needing replaced. But as it is, uh, it counts when it knows uh, when the cartridge is present, has been present continually be between operations, it also it computes internally from the amount of time the heaters are operated, um, and it has an average just to basically tell you when the uh, aroma cartridges are likely to be quite low by flashing the LEDs. And at least at that point, you could go and uh, buy a new set if you liked filling your house with stinky smells. But there we go. It's actually a nice design. It's laid out. It's got lots of logical things to it. Uh, it scores quite high as far as I'm concerned. That was really quite nice. And this custom structure for the resistors, those are probably standard resistors, ceramic ones, potted in with more ceramic material into the little heater blocks. Uh, that's very neat. So that is it. The uh, Threvolution, the new smart data one. It turns out it is actually quite smart.